Hey, what's up? This is Joe. In this video, I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions as far as camping, motorcycles, travel, and life on the road. A couple of videos back, I did kind of a myths versus realities of uh, long-term road life. Ask you guys to send any questions uh, in the comments or uh, my email. Okay, so one of the questions is, how long do I look for a spot? Um, if I'm looking for a stealth camping spot, this could take 15 minutes or it could take all day. Rapid City, South Dakota comes to mind. Me and Scotty have been out there just for hours upon hours upon hours, never really finding anything decent. And by a decent spot, basically, I mean you're on level ground, Ideally, you got some kind of a canopy above you, some trees or something to kind of keep the dew off and keep you, you know, in the shade and whatnot. And for whatever reason, man, certain places that you would think would be really easy, like Rapid City in the Black Hills, uh, are actually a total pain in the ass. Uh, where I'm from in uh, southwestern Virginia, none of the land is like level. It's all jagged, crazy mountains. And, and so any place that's level pretty much has somebody else already living there. So once it gets dark, you start being a lot less picky about your spots. And you can get away with a lot more after the sun goes down. was asking about meditation. I mentioned uh, before uh, I do a 20 minute uh, meditation practice in the morning where I just kind of sit there and breathe and try to without sounding too like woo woo you know kind of get in touch with my surroundings and, uh, and kind of get centered on uh, where I need to be for the day. It's something I've been doing for years and years just finding a great way to kind of just chill out and get kind of grounded. Okay, this one's kind of a loaded topic. Lots of people ask me for advice on traveling to Mexico, routes they should take, uh, is it safe? That's kind of a loaded question because uh, on one hand, uh, I was going there twice a year and uh, never really had any problem. I wasn't flashy. I always have a pretty humble motorcycle that I'm taking down there, you know. It's, it's not something I have a lot of money invested into. Is Mexico safe? The answer to that might be along the same lines of, is riding a motorcycle safe? You know, I mean, there are risks with uh, everything you do in life. I'm getting ready to board a plane halfway across the world to the Philippines uh, pretty soon. Is that safe? Yeah, it's safe until it's not safe. Uh, you know, if you're in the tiny uh, percentage of people that it's not safe for, and in which case you're screwed. So uh, this is true for, uh, getting behind the wheel of an automobile every day. Existence is a, a temporal, uh, mortal thing, and there's gonna be danger. There's gonna be the potential for danger no matter what you do. So uh, I guess really the question is, is it worth it to you? Well, I met this girl in a bar in Oaxaca, and she took me home. She didn't speak any English. I didn't speak shit for Spanish then, but it started off as a sexual thing. Right. <laughs> that's what really how it well, that's, started. That's usually how it, how it starts. Yeah, but then we realized we really liked each other. And she came down to my place and moved. She came down to my campground with a brand new SUV. Moved my shit right into her house. We had servants. She paid for everything. She had my teeth fixed. As a tourist, you're probably not going to have any problems as long as you're not being flashy. But that being said, you could have problems. <laughs> so it's, it's a complicated kind of a topic to talk about. But... Uh, I mean, there are places in, uh, uh, waiting for the siren, waiting for the siren. Obviously, siren going off, there are places in the U.S. that are not safe. The idea is to keep your head about you, don't be stupid, don't be doing stuff that uh, you probably shouldn't do, and uh, you'll probably be all right. Uh, as far as routes and things like that, I've never really planned routes uh, too much, but um, in Mexico, generally, you got two options. You can take the, uh, the autopistas, which are the toll roads, 
if you want a nice smooth ride uh, and to get there quick. It gets a little expensive if you're doing it often. And then you got back roads, which are a little bit of a gamble, a little more adventurous because uh, you know, a lot of them you're gonna encounter huge sections of, uh, of gravel, dirt, all kinds of crazy potholes like you can't even imagine. It's all about, <laughs> do you want an adventure? And if you're not in a hurry, I, I strongly recommend the back roads. There are pros and cons to each of those. I mean, on the autopistas, you got people that are just absolutely driving like, like maniacs at really high speeds. And on the really messed up kind of back roads and stuff, you got people that are driving like maniacs at lower speeds. So whenever I've gone to Mexico, I'll kind of divide, okay, I'm gonna be on the autopista for, from point A to point B, and then I'm gonna take some back roads and do these cool twisty roads or whatever. That, that seems to work pretty well, because if you're just on back roads the whole time, I mean, it's gonna take forever if you're going across the country, you know. But so yeah, I mean, I found Mexico to just be a country full of some of the warmest uh, people I've ever encountered, some of the best food. Ah, uh, <laughs> bueno. Yes, yes. The Mexican people just seem to have a very big heart and uh, they've always been welcoming to me and, uh, and everybody I know that's gone there. Bye bye, mucho gusto, mucho gusto. Gracias. Okay, okay. muchas gracias. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you're just not stupid and you're not flashy, I think you'll be all right. I gotta keep the vocal cords uh, lubricated on this video. I'm not used to talking as much. Okay, along the lines of Mexico, so whatever happened to Lily? Basically, if you've been following this channel for a while and you've seen some of my previous Mexico stuff, you probably remember Lily, uh, who I was dating, and I was kind of going back and forth from the U.S. to Mexico and, and spending time with her and her son. She just uh, came into the videos and was just right off the bat, uh, as soon as I started filming, she just kind of came alive and uh, it really added a lot to the videos. And at a certain point, she just disappeared from the videos. So the answer to that is things didn't work out and I just didn't feel like talking about it. So she's an absolutely lovely person and uh, still think the world of her uh, and her son for that matter. So, uh, but I've since kind of taken down a lot of the videos that were a little bit more, it's a little bit more of a romantic connotation that I don't necessarily want out in the ether uh, anymore at this point, but uh, wish them all the best and uh, I can't thank them enough for uh, for being a part of this project. I just didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> all right. Do you have a home base to get mail, registration, etc.? Which state is the easiest? This is from Renegade Moto. Yeah, you're looking at it. I mean, it's just the easiest. Uh, my address is home and anything that I need to have mailed usually comes here. Uh, I've also got obviously a scattering of friends and things like that. Uh, across the country and if I'm in that part of the country I'll have it sent there. Uh, I don't own a lot of stuff so there's not really a lot of stuff in storage. I think I got like a couple of boxes of books which is kind of my addiction is uh, collecting books because if I read a good book I used to just give it away and now I'm looking at some of the prices of like paperbacks and stuff and it's like yeah maybe I'm I'll send this one back home so I can hang on to it and read it, you know, at another time instead of paying some outrageous price to, uh, for the same book, you know, to read it again. So Virginia is, is where I'm from. Uh, Montana, apparently, uh, you don't need to register your vehicle. If you can get a Montana license plate, it's a permanent registration. You don't need to register it every year. So in the future, I might do that. I know a couple people. In, uh, in Montana, and that's the only problem with this uh, setup, is uh, you kind of have to know a guy, so.
So what type of bike works best for your kind of lifestyle? Can I do it on a Harley Bagger? Why did you choose the NC750X? You can do this on any bike. Uh, obviously I did it for well over a year and like 35,000 miles on a Ninja 300, which I rode to uh, Guatemala and Belize, not to rehash something I've already talked about ad nauseum. This might sound kind of corny, but it's all about the heart, man. I mean, if you've got the heart to make this work, uh, you can make it work absolutely on anything. So uh, do I recommend doing it on a Ninja 300? Uh, not really, unless you want to really feel like you've been kicked in the nuts about uh, 10,000 times. Doing it on a Harley Bagger, just look at Scooter Tramp Scotty. seven years or so on the road full time and he makes it work very well and he knows how to work on it and uh, if he's got a problem and a symptom he'll he knows how to fix it you know it's simple enough that he can do it so I think Harley Davidson makes the most comfortable touring bikes I just like the ergonomics of the Harley Davidson you know when you get it set up right you got it got a nice seat nice handlebars Scotty's got his bike set up uh, really nice. The only problem is that it's pretty worn out at this point. Is it running good? Yeah, it's running okay. I got problems with this stupid uh, BOES switch in here now. I've never had one that malfunctions before like this one. They've always gone out whenever I've had them go out. This one's the S&S. &S. It came with the S&S &S motor. I don't necessarily like riding Scotty's bike, but I'll do it if I have to. Cause he'll do some kind of a mod or something to it and he's like oh dude you gotta you gotta try it out i'm like yeah i know what i know what your bike is man <laughs> but as far as long distance highway travel a harley bagger is absolutely the best choice and i would choose a harley bagger but i've got this kind of uh predilection for uh for finding really quiet out of the way spots in the woods where i won't be bothered and won't be kicked out of and this bike is uh lightweight enough that I can take it on sand. I can squeeze it into tight spaces. If I get it stuck, I can get it unstuck by myself. I can pick it up easily. I'm not a tall guy, I'm about 5'8", so if you meet me, I'm not a tall guy. So this bike, the seat height on it really just allows me to kind of like put the balls of, my, of both feet clearly on the ground, you know, stable. Whereas, you know, if it was a bigger bike, I would be more uncomfortable, you know. I was more uncomfortable on, uh, on the KLR 650 I was on uh, just because of the seat height. And they say you get used to it, and you do, but the fact is, that a bike where I can reach the ground easier is ultimately just immensely more comfortable for me and uh, I have a lot more control over the bike. I can back it up easier, for instance. I mean, this bike, of course, obviously, the other thing it's got going for it is uh, the storage compartment right there, the frunk, uh, which is amazing. Like, I don't know what I ever did without that. Uh, yeah, so I just absolutely cannot sing the praises of this bike enough. If I were a bigger guy, I'd probably look into something like an Africa Twin or something like that. I think they probably do a little bit better on the highway than this one does, but this one does fine. And like I say, it's lightweight enough that I don't worry about getting it stuck and getting it unstuck. In conclusion, you can do this kind of a lifestyle on any type of motorcycle you want. And really, it doesn't even have to be a motorcycle. You can do it on a bicycle. You can do it on foot. The vehicle doesn't really matter so much as the heart. Getting over the fear of international travel. I guess that kind of goes with the questions about Mexico. A gentleman was uh, asking that question and said that he would like to kind of travel out of the country a little more, but you know, he's got that fear of traveling outside of the US that kind of holds him up. Yeah, I totally relate to uh, uh, having a fear of international travel, believe it or not. Uh, 
I get the fear before going almost every time, you know, but it does get easier the more frequently you do it. I strongly, strongly suggest uh, for your first time out of the country that you have a travel buddy or somebody that you're meeting over there to kind of show you the ropes and, and help you feel comfortable because that'll just go a long way between just having a good experience and just feeling completely lost and isolated by the culture. And ultimately what some guys do is just go straight home uh, the first chance they get. So you don't want to do that because you miss out on so much. It's an opportunity for uh, broadening your perspective of the world as a whole. This is what all the Americans are afraid of. Finally, I get a chance to try it. It's a fertilized duck egg. So it's got a little duck embryo in there. Uh, a lot of Americans are absolutely horrified by this. Um, I'm not really horrified by it at all, especially considering some of the other things I've been eating since I've been here. But uh, uh, I'm uh, willing to give it a try. So you don't want to miss out on that. So uh, strongly, strongly, strongly uh, recommend you go with somebody for your first time. And I guess that does kind of go back to the whole Mexico thing. Probably a good idea to go with a buddy or have somebody that you're meeting up with down there that can kind of uh, help you learn how to get around. I'm going into the Philippines totally blind. And so that's going to be interesting. But, you know, it, these things just work out. And even though it's a pain in the ass uh, getting over there, it's a long ass uh, flight and, uh, and it's going to be a new culture. You know, doing stuff like that is, is uh, what makes life exciting. And if you give into that fear, and, and don't act or don't do something because you have that fear, then you're missing out on so much. Somebody said, all men live lives of quiet desperation. And I think it's really true. Uh, a lot of people have like this unrequited uh, passion in life for something that, that it's just their fear has been holding them back uh, all their life and, and never get to do it. So you just have to, I get afraid every time. And I just have to look at my fear almost like a living entity and say, screw you, buddy, I'm doing it anyway. So that's my suggestion on the uh, international travel stuff. So. What editing software do you use? iMovie all the way. I just like the interface. I mean, there's there's gonna be pros and cons to every software program, every computer on the face of the earth. Certainly there are good and bad aspects to Apple, but uh, I just find the user interface laid out in a really logical and user-friendly way. Everything I need to do is right there, which really kind of keeps the learning curve down uh, for using that software. I'm looking into some other stuff right now, like, uh, doing the Google Earth stuff, which I've been practicing with, with uh, mixed results. <laughs> Ideally, I'd love to get my hands on some Adobe software, but, uh, but the fact is now, I mean, they're just uh, charging an arm and a leg uh, for the subscription service to use that software. So it's, it's really become kind of a rich man's software. And even like After Effects, there's some amazing possibilities of using that software. Maybe one day, if I can keep this kind of channel growing and stuff. It's not fair because I've paid in the past for several pieces of Adobe software, which no longer work uh, with my computer. So it's really kind of the principle of the thing, but I just, I love iMovie. It's so easy to use. Okay, next up. Do you always ride solo or do you ever travel with a buddy? I usually ride solo. And the reason for that is I like to be able to travel at my own pace. You know, it's really hard to get two guys that are kind of always on the same page. You know, like myself, I wake up pretty early and do my meditation and, uh, and I'm ready to get it going, man. I've got a, a type A personality and let's, you know, accomplish our objectives for the day. Let's, let's get it going. Uh, whereas somebody like Scotty, about the time I'm leaving, he's like just waking up and, and popping out of his tent and like, hey man, <laughs> Where are you going in such a hurry, Joe? And look who showed up. What up, bro? Uh, that's a scooter tramp right there. Yeah. Endangered species. Having a little coffee. <laughs> Still free. Still free. Scotty's turning up a lot in this video, uh, obviously. So if you're interested in his channel, On the Road with Scooter Tramp Scotty, he was uh, instrumental in getting me kind of started on this whole lifestyle. What I like to do is meet up along the way. 
where we we both kind of travel at our own pace and we might ride together for a little bit and then it's like oh, okay i'll meet you down in uh cody wyoming or somewhere like that and then we'll meet up and 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 hang out at the campsite and then we've kind of got our own schedules our own agendas and stuff like that but generally for the most part i really just prefer the uh the peace of mind of uh, of traveling solo and you kind of go on a more of an introspective kind of a journey and and what happens a lot of the times when people travel together is they get really cranky and get on each other's nerves. I know I do, you know, I get cranky when I'm traveling, uh, lots of miles and stuff like that. And so I just find it better to travel solo and just, hey, let's meet up, you know, in Guadalajara, you know, or somewhere like that. So some of you guys are, are interested in like, meeting up at certain points or whatever. The best thing that I would tell somebody that, that's interested in meeting up and, and wants to hang out and pick up some of this stuff, you know, I'm happy to share. Uh, I am a very busy person. And like I said, I'm very type A, even though I'm living kind of what most probably perceived to be a really tranquil, relaxed lifestyle. I'm very go, 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 go. Always working on something. The best way is, is come by the shows. So I know you're real. If you can come and find me, it, you know, uh, for instance, I'm going to be in Biketoberfest uh, in a couple of days, you know, in Florida working is uh, come by, introduce yourself, say hi. That way I know I'm not giving out some kind of personal information uh, to some bot that, you know, could be from whatever country. I like to kind of meet people face to face and sort of get a bead on them first. And if you're at Biketoberfest, please come by and say hi. Uh, Memphis Shades behind the JMP lot. What scares you most about the lifestyle, i.e. bears, lightning, storms, snakes, etc., etc.? Bears don't really freak me out too much uh, because I learned kind of a lot of the precautions to take from, uh, from talking to some of the rangers in uh, Montana uh, where they have a lot of grizzly bears. And there's a set protocol that you take when you're in the woods uh, that really sort of minimize your chances of, uh, of having an encounter uh, with a bear. Uh, if you spend enough time in the woods, you're going to see bears. And the best thing to do uh, in that situation is uh, not smell like food. So <laughs> that's something to be mindful of if you're in bear countries. You want to respect them and you don't want to be stupid. But again, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And it's a lot easier to prevent a bear attack than it is to recover from a bear attack. So uh, if you're well prepared, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Snakes don't really freak me out too much because I know where to look uh, for snakes generally. A lot of the times they're going to be near a body of water. You know, snakes live and hang out around water sources because mammals go to that water source to drink. And so it's a strategic place for a hunter uh, to be near some kind of a water source because you know there's going to be some kind of a warm-blooded animal uh, going down to that water source. So anytime I see water, I'm, I'm a little like sketched out. And particularly if there's like tall grass or I'm walking through stuff where I can't even see my toes, then I get a little sketched out and then I've got like a stick and I'm kind of like, you know, poking around before I step there and really kind of watching every step. The thing that really freaks me out, guys, and, and I'm not shy to tell you and be honest about this, is the storms. I mean, some of these storms just get freaky. And there's times where I am just literally, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I'll just be like cowering in my tent, like watching the lightning come down like right in front of me and watching the hail come down and it's just like the wrath of God on the earth all of a sudden. And it's freaky because you just got a couple of millimeters of nylon separating you from all hellfire. The average person's chances of getting struck by lightning are pretty slim, but the average person doesn't live in the woods. And so it's like if you got somebody that works outside, your chances go up of, of getting struck by lightning or, or more than likely some kind of electrical discharge i.e. the lightning hits something behind you and, and some of the discharge rolls off and you know, gets you like that. Are you going to die from getting struck by lightning? From what I've read, probably not, but it's just, it's kind of a bad day. 
I'm looking at doing this a little different in the future and um, and kind of learning to uh, broaden my skill set and look for some more kind of abandoned barns and, and houses and things like that and places to kind of seek shelter. I mean, some of my choices in the past have just been, in retrospect, pretty stupid. He yeah, absolutely started pouring down rain out of nowhere. Uh, strangely enough, I'm pretty much completely dry uh, under all this canopy right here. There's a wind coming from that way, so it's like, I'm just kind of like right behind this tree. Not really getting wet, so. Anyway, I hope it stops soon. Nothing to do but just uh, wait this out, man. I got no shelter to speak of uh, out here. Just came out of nowhere, and now I'm getting hit with some hail. Given the severity of some of the storms I've been around, statistically, you're probably not going to get struck by lightning, but you know, there's always a chance. Is it harder to live a healthy lifestyle on the road? Yes, it is harder because a lot of the times when you're on the road, you're hungry, you're doing a lot of miles, and what's the first thing you see? Fast food, you know, or some kind of a store that doesn't have any healthy options whatsoever. Right now I'm doing basically kind of a carnivore diet, which is a lot of rotisserie chicken. And that's been pretty good at keeping the weight down and uh and i feel pretty good doing it i did this because i was really not feeling too good uh eating a diet with sugar and a lot of carbohydrates you know i love that stuff i love pasta and pizza obviously burgers you know with a good brioche bun so this is the triple b burger blueberry bacon and brie cheese but i just uh I feel like crap and I just, I blow up like a balloon. You know, it's genetics and uh, I'm in a restaurant and a waitress walks by and she's bringing somebody their burger. I'll gain a half a pound just from that, just from looking at the burger. So I'm really kind of convinced that a lot of this stuff is kind of poisonous, you know, uh, a lot of the sugar and a lot of that stuff leads to a lot of other kind of health ailments and things like that. It's worth it to try to be healthy. I mean, I've seen some guys out here and they just end up like smoking too much or drinking too much and they don't last, you know? So I just, I try to live clean, as clean as possible. Obviously I'm not too clean. I don't drink or do drugs for that matter. Not that I have any like moral opposition to it. You know, I think uh, everybody should be free to do whatever they want, essentially, as long as they're not hurting anybody else. I just kind of realized uh, a long time ago that that stuff is not for me. So this is probably a frequently asked question is when are you going to write a book? Short answer to that is I don't know. I would like to write a book. Absolutely. But, uh, but right now I'm kind of focused on this channel and making these videos and that's kind of consumes a lot of my time. And there's actually a lot of writing that kind of goes into making the dialogue and kind of chopping together the storyline for the video. So it's not just a bunch of random clips of, of writing and stuff like that. I like to have everything kind of sort of a narrative arc uh, to most of the videos. If you'll notice, there's kind of a beginning and an end, you know? There are stories that I cannot tell here that would probably open a lot of people's eyes to what this lifestyle is really like. You know, I have seen things, I have seen aspects of humanity and had my eyes open in, in so many ways but you know unfortunately I can't tell those stories uh, and so I'd love to be able to do it in like a book format where I could really kind of put out the uncensored kind of truth of what this is really like you know you know as a video creator I want to be creative you know feeling kind of stifled like I can't really tell some of these stories or uh, freely kind of express my mind uh, about certain things. It's a little bit of a drag, but at the same time, what an amazing opportunity it is to uh, be able to live this kind of a lifestyle and travel and be able to share it with the world is, uh, is something I really enjoy. So uh, with that being said, I think that just about wraps it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Q&A format. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. Maybe I'll do another Q&A. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you're interested in supporting this channel, please check out the donate link in the drop box. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road.